is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right, right now. now. Your friend invites you to go to a gay bar. Your sister invites her new boyfriend home to dinner. He is a female to male transsexual. The AG president in the area hall is putting herself through school by exotic dancing. Yeah, you okay with any of those questions? We're going to take a survey. I'm not big on tests. Just not real big on tests. Um, you know, I'll tell you why. Um... I think it was the way I grew up. Do you remember elementary school, Lee, at all? I mean, anything about it? Barely. Yeah, I, I can I can count on one hand. You know, now I'm gonna I'm gonna sound like all those old guys, right? I can count on one hand uh, the times I didn't walk to school, and it was a, it was a cool thing. I mean. You know, I lived out in the country, and so you walked and walked, and as you passed other people's place, you know, they'd join you. And so, you know, you'd start off by yourself. By the time you got to the school, there were like, you know, eight, nine, ten guys, you know, walking. Um, I can remember on one hand the times I didn't walk to school because the snow was too deep. And my grandfather would, uh, you know, he put me in his uh, 59 Bel Air with plastic on the seats and Paul Harvey coming out of the radio. Um, and I was hated. I always hated that because going to school was kind of a treat. You know what I mean? You'd, you'd find sticks and rocks and dead animals in the ditch and just all kinds of cool things before you even got to school. Anyway, um, my grandmother and grandfather raised me. What she would do, I, did, you, did this ever happen to you? She would invite my teacher and even Dr. Farmer, the principal of the school, to dinner, like once every four or five months. And, of course, you had to go in, and you had to put on your nice clothes, and, you know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and, well, you know, just you know, general manners. Did you ever have your teacher invited to dinner? Did you ever have that? Yes, I have. Yeah. Dr. Farmer, nice principal, you know, you come to the table, and it's kind of weird watching the principal eat food. You know, you, you know, they have to, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, as a little kid, anyway, my grandmother would find out what the the books were for the coming year. And for an hour or so a day during the summer, I'd go through the books. So I was ready. By the time school opened up on, you know, whenever it opened up, I was ready to go. You know, had, had, and then when I got older, I hated lectures. Isn't that odd? I talk for a living. But I hated sitting there in a hot August afternoon in a lecture hall with no air conditioning, all the uh, old wooden windows up in the university trying to get some breeze. Uh, it was, it, I, I did an about face. It was like, tell me what we're going to be tested on. Give me the book. I'll see you in a month. That's pretty much, and that's how I made it through college. Um, you know, I wanted to be a surgeon. I wanted that more than anything. Uh, aced all my dissection classes, I, all of that, just could not do chemistry. Got it tutored, everything. Just my brain didn't work that way. So I ended up going to law school, and that was a piece of cake. It's a whole left brain, right brain thing anyway. Um, so I, I like tests at that point. Just tell me what you're going to test me on. You know, I, I'm not going to get anything in this lecture hall that I can't get out of the book, um, and I'll come back and, and take the test. And if I you know, don't pass, then... You were right, and I was wrong. Things are a little different now. You know, I've said this many times. If my kids were of an age, they would still be in elementary, middle school, junior high, high school. There is no way, no way I would let the sun set with them enrolled in public school. I just wouldn't do it. And I know a lot of people disagree with me, and that's fine. I mean, if we're all exactly the same, a lot of us aren't necessary. But it, this has nothing to do with teachers. You know, I, I think the biggest abomination when it comes to unions are, is the teachers' union. 
you know, it's uh, very little about educating kids and more. Well, I won't get into that, but most teachers, you know, don't go into teaching because they want to, they want to retire at 40 in Barbados. I mean, you just don't make that kind of dough, right? Um, so, you know, it's not about the teachers. It's about the government approved curriculum. That's what it's about. That's why I don't want my kids in public school is because I don't want the government trying to socialize my kids. Now, if you don't think the federal government has the first and last call and what goes on, on in the classroom, then you are sadly mistaken. You know, I have before me right here a test, a test that was given to college students. No, no. Grad students. No, no. I, I talked to my daughter the other day. Um, she still, she still works for the, for the university that she graduated from. Um, if you're a grad student, you have to go through her, uh, to find out what on your transcript will apply to whatever, you know, PhD or whatever you're doing. She works for the Dean of Graduate Studies and she loves her job. And then she's like across the street. How ironic is this? Across the street from her old sorority house, which I poured tons of money into at the time. And I thought, hey, you got to walk across the street, got the job and saved, saved pops a whole lot of dough. Um, but in any case, she loves her job. Um, and, uh, you know, she's doing some other things with the university. But was it university students got this? Uh, maybe uh, grad students. Maybe they got this. No, no. High school students. Well, we'll go out on a limb. High school. What do you think? High school students, Lee? Probably. Okay. Yeah, David. Well, David, you know. So No, you know. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Okay. Well, this is a test. Had it been the real thing, you would have been. No, no. Uh, this is a test of sorts, a questionnaire, a survey. Uh, a splattering of uh, questions and answers, a virtual cornucopia of psychological information coming forth from the little chillin'. All right? I'm going to give this to you. This was given to sixth graders. Sixth graders. Now, let's say you're five in kindergarten, six in first, seven in second. So how are you? Uh, how old are you in sixth grade? Well, since my wife teaches that grade, I know they range anywhere from 11, 12, and 13, 11, depending, 11, depending 12, if they were held back. Pre-teenagers. That's exactly right. The, the, what they call, uh, what are they, uh, the uh, tweens? Is that what they're called? I have no clue All what they're right, called. It doesn't matter. Um, so 11, 12, and 13, they were given this questionnaire uh, here in Texas, by the way. Birdville Independent School District. Man, we have got some great school districts, don't we? Fort Worth Independent School District. How long did we spend on trying to decide where everybody goes to the bathroom? Hmm? Well, believe it or not, this has nothing to do with it, with the bathroom, Bill. Um, I'm going to ask you, if you have a sixth grader, 11, 12, 13, or you had one, or a granddaughter, grandchild, whatever it has, uh, is this appropriate to be giving to sixth graders? Now, forgive me, I don't have a teaching certificate. I don't have a PhD next to my name. You know, I, you know, I'm not top heavy uh, in the in the ivory tower, looking down on the unwashed masses flocking to my feet for education every day. I don't have any of that. I got a few degrees. Don't know whether they help me or not, but. Um, you be the judge, not the federal government, not the state government. You be the judge on whether this is appropriate to be giving out to 11-year-olds. And said, Mom, hey, they asked us these questions at school, made us fill out this questionnaire. Well, all right. Uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna put our thinking caps on. Uh, let's pretend... Shall we? Let's pretend for just a second. I don't care whether you're driving a truck, walking the top rail of a house under construction, sitting in a cubicle, uh, in a waiting room at a hospital. It doesn't matter where you are or what you do. Uh, for the next uh, little bit, you're going to be a teacher. You're going to be an educator because I have to question some of the intelligence from some of the people that supposedly are educating our kids. All right. Um, 
Birdville ISD said it's disciplined a teacher for handing out a questionnaire to sixth grade students that asked them to rank their level of comfort with various things. And I'll tell you in a second. How comfortable am I? Questionnaire. That's what it's called. How comfortable? As a matter of fact, Lee, how comfortable are you today? Very comfortable. David, how comfortable are you today? Well, I took a survey, and I'm doing better. Okay, very good. Uh, and by the way, we have contacted Birdville ISD several times. What type of discipline are you talking about? You say the teacher was disciplined. What What is that? Suspension? Um, maybe uh, an assistant in the classroom? Uh, what What's the discipline? Did uh, we ever get an answer? No, but... Can I speculate? No. No speculation. Okay. We're dealing with facts here. We don't know. We don't know. We have no idea. I'll go ahead. Speculate. What? <laughs> don't do that again. Don't do that again. Don't do Shame it. Shame on you. No cookies in the teacher's lounge I don't lounge know what you were you. thinking. I All don't right. know what you were thinking. You bring the muffins to the teacher's lounge every day for the next two weeks. All right. Three years. You're gone. How comfortable am I? It's a questionnaire which was distributed to one class at... Uh, North Richland Middle School on February 7th. Uh, Ashley Brent said she was shocked uh, when her 12-year-old son came home and showed her the questionnaire. Um, see, this is the kind of thing, uh, If when my kids were in school, it uh, the outcome-based education, remember that? Yeah, there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer, it's just a journey in the mind. Excuse me? I mean, I was at that school more than my kids were, and they, they knew my car. Oh, my God, that talk show guy's here. Um, didn't last very long. Uh, they went back to educating. Uh, the assignment follows the list of 41 scenarios that ask the kids to rank how comfortable they are with each thing, ranging from one, not comfortable at all, to four, completely comfortable. The, insi- the assignment uh, includes statements like, a fr- well, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Her giving this out without the consent of the parents is absolutely, in my book, unbelievable. And I have to question her capabilities as an educator. Uh, I, I don't know anything about the woman, wouldn't know her if she dropped in out of the ceiling tile in five minutes. Well, if she did that, then obviously I'd know it's her. But uh, this makes me wonder how fit she is to teach if she would hand this out thinking it's okay. Again, to 11 and 12 and maybe 13-year-olds. All right. Are you ready to take the test? Uh, I'm dying to. By the way, Birdville said, well, we mm -hmm, agree. The survey was probably not appropriate, and disciplinary action was taken. That's according to spokesman Mark Thomas. Mark, that wasn't my question. You know, this. uh, you sent out this... uh, press release says the same thing. My, my question was, what did Birdville ISD deem appropriate for this kind of uh, infraction, shall we say? All right, here we go. You ready? 1-800-288-WBAP, 1-800-288-9227. Um, you be the educator. You're teaching sixth grade kids, 11, 12, 13 years old. You tell me whether this is appropriate. All right, guys, you ready to play here? How comfortable am I? That's the questionnaire. Please take some time to rate, indicate by circle, the following statements on a scale of one to four. One, I'm not comfortable at all. To four, being completely comfortable. All right, here you go. A friend invites you to go to a gay bar. Are you comfortable with that, Lee? Uh, No. No, not comfortable with that. Well, maybe an 11-year-old would be. I, I didn't think they could drink. No. Uh... Number two, a homeless man approaches you and asks for change. Would you be comfortable with that or not comfortable with that? Comfortable. You're comfortable with that. All right. Um, Now, if you were 11, would you be comfortable with that? Uh, No. No. Uh, Your new roommate, I don't know how many (laughs) 11-year-olds living by themselves with roommates, uh, which this comes up a couple times in the survey, and I'm going, wait a minute. How many of these 11-year-olds are living on their own? You know, this is wrong. Uh, Your new roommate is Palestinian and Muslim. Are you comfortable with that or not comfortable with that? David? 
I wouldn't be comfortable with that. Okay. All right. Um, number four, a group of young black men. Ooh, they're walking toward you on the street. You're 11 years old. Are you comfortable with that or not comfortable with that? Your history instructor speaks with a pronounced Vietnamese accent. What? How many 11-year-olds are going to know, hmm, hmm, yeah, I think they're from Da Nang. I mean, how many 11-year-olds know anything about that? Okay. Uh, number six, your assigned lab partner, again, uh, this is my, I was surprised to find out 11-year-olds have lab class, but there you go. Your assigned lab partner, oh, maybe the worst of the bunch, is a fundamentalist Christian. Are you comfortable with that? Not comfortable with that. Your new roommate, here's that 11-year-old living in the apartments across the street, uh, your new roommate is atheist. Are you comfortable with that? Not comfortable. Here, I love this one. Your sister invites her new boyfriend to dinner. He's a female to male transsexual. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I know. I'm not trying to figure it out. He's a, he's a, or she, or well, female to male. So it was a girl. Okay. What, what, what do 11 year olds know about that? Or 12 year olds? They know, well, maybe more than I think. Uh, your women's studies instructor, again, imagine my shock and surprise to find out there is a class called women's studies in sixth grade. Well, there you go. I've been out too long, I guess. Your women's studies instructor is a Muslim woman who wears a headscarf and a full-length robe. Are you comfortable or not comfortable? The young man sitting next to you on the airplane is Arab. Well, again, why is an 11-year-old flying by themselves? I, I don't know. Your new sweet mates, again, these are the, for those 12-year-olds that live on their own. Your new sweet mate uh, is Mexican. Are you comfortable? Uncomfortable. Your new roommate, again, for those 11-year-olds that have roommates, your new roommate is gay. Are you comfortable? Not comfortable. The woman sitting next to you on the plane... Here, that's that 11-year-old flying by themselves again. Uh, weighs 250 pounds. Are you comfortable? Well, I think everybody knows that. Uh, your brother's new girlfriend is a single mother on welfare. Are you comfortable or uncomfortable? A child in the class in which you are a student is HIV positive. Uh, there you go. You're comfortable, uncomfortable. You discover that the cute young man or woman that you are attracted to is actually of the opposite sex. So you thought she was a girl, it's a guy. You thought it was a guy, it's a girl. Man, this, this is worse than a math test trying to figure this out. Okay, your black roommate, again, at the risk of being redundant, how many 11-year-olds are living by themselves out here? This is wrong. Your black roommate gets a full tuition minority scholarship. Are you comfortable with that? Or are you not comfortable with that? Just a couple more. Hopefully you keep keeping your pencils sharp. Your new roommate has been in prison. Okay, now see, that's where I draw the line. 12-year-olds living out by themselves with gay roommates and guys that have been in prison. That's not right. Okay. Um, a Thai immigrant student invites you to dinner with her family. Are you comfortable or uncomfortable? Your residence hall floor, I guess this is for the 12-year-old college students, um, your residence hall floor is doing community service at a homeless shelter. Are you comfortable, uncomfortable? And then finally, you are asked to prepare a presentation on diversity for your community. I don't know. It seems to me we've got a lot of 11, 12-year-olds living out there on their own and uh, living with uh, people in prison and gays and it just, okay, this is, what, this is what this genius, this Einstein teacher handed out to 11, 12-year-old kids and... Uh, she thought this was okay. Do you need me to tell you again why I wouldn't put my kids in public school? And said, Mom, hey, they asked us these questions at school, made us fill out this questionnaire. This is like crazy. You shouldn't give this to a, a sixth grader. This shouldn't be up to the school 
to bring up. I wasn't ready for my son to be exposed to these type of things. Your friend invites you to go to a gay bar. Your sister invites her new boyfriend home to dinner. He is a female to male transsexual. Uh, the what? AG president in the area it? hall is putting herself through school by exotic dancing. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. At 11 years old, what was I doing at 11 years old? Thinking about exotic dancers or male to female, female to male transact, trans, transactuals? Um, was I thinking about gay people or lesbians or, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm 11 years old, but I'm very, very uh, intuitive. I am thinking you're speaking with a Vietnamese accent. What, what? Um, hmm, Da Nang, maybe? Uh, what, what, I was putting baseball cards on the spokes of my bicycle with a clothespin so it sounded like a motorcycle. That's what I was doing at 11. Man, did I miss a lot. All right, this is what was given him. Well, <clears throat> we're going to discipline. What kind of discipline? David, it's 2.35. Uh, would you make another call to Birdwell? I, well, actually... I would have you ask for the guy by name, except there's just oh he's not here. Um, I did call earlier today. That's the answer I got. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Don't ask for anybody in particular. Say hi. This is Dave David, the producer of the Rick Roberts show. Mm -hmm. He would. Uh, I'm not mad. I'm not upset. If my kids were in that class, I would be. But I'm. I'm not. Um, he Rick would like to know what type of discipline is normally met out for this type of inappropriate action okay all right so don't make don't put the burden of proof on them just say rick would like to know what type of disciplinary action is is given for this type of inappropriate behavior okay i can do that all right we'll see if we can get an answer for you before the end of the show okay. let's go to my guest educators how comfortable am i questionnaire let's go to denise in north richland hills denise how you doing Hi, I'm uh, I'm doing okay. Um, just first want to say I love your show. Thanks. I appreciate <laughs> um, that. You're very welcome. Um, I'm actually one of the uh, parents of one of the children that this survey was given to. You're, you are, really? Were you, yes. were you quoted by the news? No, I was not because I was not informed of the survey until after the uh, meetings and everything. Ah. I was not called until after the uh, news and everything was uh, uh, at the school and all that good stuff. I don't know how they missed calling me, um, but um, I do. I was told when the principal called me that this survey was given to six students. Yes, six. Six One, two, students. Three, four, five, six. Not yes. sixth grade students, but six students. Well, the students range from sixth grade to eighth grade. My student is an eighth grader. Okay, so sixth grade to eighth grade. And so yeah. it, the school is saying only six students saw this. What, is the class only six people? Well, it, there, there's another kicker to it. Ah. Um, it's a special needs class. Well, that's even worse. Yes. Um, well, for, the, what, good Lord. It's an emotional, it's an emotional needs class. Wait a minute, um, you're telling me, a spe and I have more than a passing knowledge of this, uh, having uh, worked alongside people that work with special needs kids. You're telling me this is a special needs class for emotionally disturbed kids. Yes. That's, this, this is, that's criminal to, to expose my, this, them, to the, uh, them to this. My grandson, I'm just going to tell you about my grandson. I don't want to say anything about any other children. My grandson I'm raising, he was um, taken from his mother, um, and his siblings were adopted outside of our family, and they were adopted by a lesbian couple. And now my grandson has PTSD. He's got uh, emotional damaging, and he's got um, behavior issues and things like that. So, therefore, he's been deemed a... Uh, special needs child, he's been deemed a uh, special education. And that's why he's in this class. And uh, I asked him about the survey and he said that it was only given to the students that are with this specific teacher all day long, which is six other students. 
because I was asking him because my grandson happens to be Hispanic. So I was wondering, you know, well, maybe he was, you know, pointed out because of his race or because of, you know, I was trying to figure out why it was just six students because that's what the principal had told me. Did you see a copy of this at the time he told you about it? Okay. No, because he did not bring it home. And, um, I, when I heard about it, I heard about it actually on WBAP. They had said something about it, and that was the day that the school called me was the day that you guys first said something about right, it. Right, right. Because I listened to y'all every day, and I was uh, on my way to work, and I heard about it on there, and I was like, what? And I was about to call the school when I got to work, and that's when the school had called me first before I had a chance to call them, and she had told me about it. The principal did. Okay, so what, she, what did – okay, Denise, before we go much further, and if it's too personal – uh, it's your prerogative uh, whether to answer or not, all right? Um, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to get into somebody's business. Um, but I heard you break down just a moment ago. You started to cry. What, yes. What is that, if you if you don't mind ask, me asking? I will tell you, um, because my, like I said, his siblings were adopted by a lesbian couple, and this could have triggered a emotional breakdown in my grandson. This this With, questionnaire? Yes, because it asked about how comfortable are you around lesbian people or gay people or how would you feel about going to a gay bar or things like that. Well see that's why I don't understand. And, why would you get you why would you give this to any sixth, seventh or eighth grader, but especially exactly. an emotional needs kid? Why would you do that? Exactly. And and the other thing, you asked about this teacher. Let me tell you, um, the very first week of school This might out my grandson automatically, but the very first week of school, they didn't read his special education paperwork. It specifically says on there that you are not to touch my grandchild when he's in an anger outburst. This teacher had a bigger teacher uh, come in and restrain my grandson and threw him against a wall, had a police officer come in and throw my grandson against a police car, had him in handcuffs. All because he cussed their teacher. Well, my, you know that to people me. to people that don't know that may sound like you know very very extraordinary behavior. But in special needs classes, they deal with a lot of this emotional yeah. outburst, a lot of different things, and they're you know they have certifications to deal with emotional um, distraught kids that need uh, special attention. Um, yes, how, and they your, never how, read. How's he they doing? Never read his paperwork. How's they he doing now? How's he doing now? He's, he do- he's doing great. He's a good kid. He really is. He he does get in trouble at school a little bit, but he's doing much better. When he's playing football, he's better. But um, season's not in right now. But he's he's a good kid. He really is. Um, you know, now that he's been with us for a couple of years, he's doing better. And like I said, I was he's been in and out of alternative schools because of his behavior. And it's because of his anger outbursts and things like that. Is he on medication? He is not on medication anymore. He is on medication for the depression. Yeah, I'm not. not by for, the way, I'm not yes. suggesting that medication is the the beginning and end of all situations. Many times, it exacerbates an already pre existing condition. So that's not what I was right. saying. I was just asking. Uh, well, I gotta I gotta take a break. Um, but I, I hate to leave you like this. Uh, did you get any satisfaction from the principal at all? None. None. They just told me that she that this teacher had been uh, disciplinary action had been taken and they would not tell me what disciplinary action. So I asked my child, I said, um, what uh, I said, is this teacher still at work? And of course, I know what teacher it is. And he said, yeah, she was there. I said, so she was there today. And he said, yeah, she was there. And she has not missed today. Well, I like I said, probably. Uh, to them, disciplinary action means she has to bring the uh, the muffins every day for the next two weeks to the teacher's lounge. Uh, listen, listen, I'm going to keep a positive thought, throw up a prayer for you and your uh, your son, Denise. Uh, you're doing a good thing. I was raised by my grandparents, and, you know, that's kind of a special thing. You don't have to do that, <laughs> but you are doing it. Um, and uh, it sounds like you care very deeply. And, Denise, hang in there. Things... Uh, Things have a way of working themselves out. 2.43 the time. All right, you heard the how comfortable am I questionnaire. What do you think the discipline should have been for this teacher? I mean, you unless she can't read. 
if the teacher can't read, oh, I don't know what is the, I don't know what this is. Here, you read it. You're six. You're eleven years old. You figure it out, um, and then hand it in. I wasn't ready for my son to be exposed to these type of things. This shouldn't be up to the school to bring up. This is like crazy. You shouldn't give this to a, a sixth grader. And said, Mom, hey, they asked us these questions at school, made us fill out this questionnaire. Your friend invites you to go to a gay bar. Your sister invites her new boyfriend home to dinner. He is a female to male transsexual. The AG president in the area hall is putting herself through school by exotic dancing. All right. All right. Just got this in. Um, as an, and I always get this every time I give my opinion on public education and yes, I have been in the classroom. All right. I taught honors biology. Um, but that's because I was a pre-med student, couldn't do chemistry, so I couldn't be a doctor. Um, as an educator for the last 15 years, I am so offended by your comments toward educators. Okay. Lee, was I talking about public schools, the curriculum, and the involvement of the federal government, or was I talking about independent teachers? You were talking about A. Yes. Uh, what I said was teachers usually don't go into the teaching to retire at 40 years old in Barbados. They do it because they have a love of teaching and sharing that love. Um, this isn't a personal indictment on teachers. It's about the curriculum. It's about the fact the federal government has got their hand in the back pocket of every public school. That's why I wouldn't put my kids in public school. Um, this uh, idiot that sent this survey out is not indicative of the education system. I have put my heart and soul into every child that I've ever educated. You don't know what it's like to be a teacher. Well, actually, I do. Uh, you may not send your kids to public schools. Well, I just said that I did. What I did say is if they were at the age where they would uh, be school age, junior high, high school, uh, I'd take a second job. I'd work at night. I'd do whatever I had to do to keep them out of public schools. Not because of the teachers, but because I don't like the federal government trying to socialize my kids. Outcome-based education, common core, it's all garbage. And you know, if you're really an educator, it's garbage. Um, and let's see, some of us have to send our kids to public school because we can't afford to put them in private school. Okay, that was not even an issue or a topic, was it? I didn't even say anything about that. Um, or stay home and be homeschooled. Rick, you are so offensive, I cannot even describe it. And I used to be a fan. You have crossed the line, and you have gone way too far on this one. Um, you have lost your mind. Okay. Um, sounds to me like you need to learn the dynamics of debate and uh, argument. Uh, because the only thing I've crossed the line on is that I've said something you don't agree with. Well, you know, that's going to happen more often than not. But I'm not a politician. I'm not going to play to the crowd and give something uh, out. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel about it. I think public education is nothing but a black hole, um, and I feel bad for teachers that have to work for those kind of wages and, for the most part, don't get any recognition or support. Um, but I, I wouldn't put my kids in public school. I just wouldn't. If they were... You know, of that age, I do something, I, but I'm not, and not because of the teacher. I've had some fine teachers, um, but I don't want the government uh, trying to indoctrinate my kids. I just don't want that. Um, all right. So with all due respect, we're going to agree to disagree, or, you know, you're going to listen to a different show or whatever you're going to do. Uh, let's go to Steve and Wiley. Steve, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Steve? Bye, Rick. I uh, appreciate you taking my call. Sure. Um I think the only way we're going to fix anything is to abolish the Department of Education. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd no, like serious. to see it. I'd like to see it uh, reformed. That's for sure. Because they they get these superintendents in, pay them unbelievable amounts of money, and just tell them we're paying you this money. You'll do what we say. So they have no choice. It's either give up that big fat paycheck and do what's right or just play along and cash the check. Well, the Department and of Education kids, is top-heavy. when it, It's like the old saying, uh, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Um, that's the Department of Public Education. Um, and what they're paying some of these superintendents is ridiculous in comparison to the people that are actually teaching the kids every day. It's nuts. Um, and, again, uh, they're top-heavy. 
because they're so involved with the federal government. You know, they become liaisons uh, to ridiculous things like outcome-based education or Common Core. Uh, I mean, Common Core was, was, do you know anything about Common Core? Anything at all? Uh, if you did, and your kids in public school, you'd probably get them out tomorrow. Uh, I'm uh, I'm sorry that you feel, as a matter of fact, remember when they were trying to push Common Core? The federal government was trying to push Common Core with liaisons at a state level. So they had those little town meetings trying to explain it. Here, here's a group listening to a couple of these chuckleheads try to explain Common Core and why it's a good deal. I want you to listen to one of the authors for Common Core and why he got involved. Listen. That's using it um, basically is saying this is inspiring a closer and more engaged uh, student student body. So the people that are actually using it like it. And again, in terms of the local control, you still have local control. So if you want higher standards, if that's really if that is your genuine point, then you can go ahead and do the you can do the higher standard. And the process was indeed totally transparent. And I'm going to defer now to David and Bill. Um, I'm not paid to be here either. Uh, and I'm just uh, an interested teacher who helped write the standards. And the reason why I helped write the standards and the reason why I am here today is that as a white male in society, I'm given a lot of privilege that I didn't earn. And as a result, I think it's really important. There you go. As a uh, white male born into society, I'm given a lot of privilege that I didn't earn. That's when the crowd went nuts. Yeah, there's one of the authors of Common Core. Sounds like a good deal, doesn't it? This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be a few hundred million more like me just trying to keep it free. Yeah. Rick Roberts starts. Rick Roberts starts right, right now. now. All right, welcome, 304 the time. All right, well, I've upset a couple of school teachers. <laughs> People are predisposed to hear what they want to hear. Now, I, I think uh, public schools are top-heavy uh, as the liaisons to federal government. Oh, well, a school superintendent makes, what, 125000 150000 depending on where they are. Uh, compare that with teacher salaries. Uh, about 36000 to 50000 if you're in a huge area. Um, doesn't make much sense, does it? But that's kind of the same way it is in every business. Um, like I said, I just wouldn't put my kid in public schools. That's not a dig on school teachers. It's a dig on the federal government trying to socialize and indoctrinate my kids. I wouldn't have it. Wouldn't do it. And this uh, questionnaire is a good example. It's not the first time. I've been a talk uh, radio host and radio and television for over 25 years. I've seen this at least 20, 30 times. And the school, oh, well, we didn't know. We didn't know. Well, you're making 150 grand a year. You should know as a superintendent. Well, it was a first-year teacher. Okay, well, it was a first-year teacher. She didn't know. Um, give her an assistant for a while or him. No, until they, uh, you know, they can feel the ropes. Trust me, I, I know. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. What really got me going on public education was outcome-based education because my daughter was my daughter. Statistically, girls uh, not as much anymore, but then girls did very poorly in math and science. So I would take time. She would come home. We kind of made a thing of it. You know, dad and daughter sitting at the kitchen table. You get your hot chocolate. I'll get my coffee. Let's do homework. All right. And I was lucky enough and blessed enough to have that kind of time. And the first time I was made aware of outcome-based education, I don't know, it was like Timmy and Johnny and Susie all went to get pizza, you know, one of those pizza things. And if he gets two and she gets one and they divide the third one, you know, that kind of thing. And my daughter worked and worked and worked on this. And, you know, she was almost in tears. And I said, okay, well, let's figure this out together. So we worked on it for about an hour. And I said, well, Punk and I think there's probably a misprint in the workbook or, you know, something. You get dressed, get ready for bed, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I sat there for three hours looking at this stupid thing. 
and there was no answer that could be taken from this, uh, the information given. So the next day, I called the school. Oh, Mr. Roberts, you know, this is part of the new outcome-based education. Excuse me? Well, there is no wrong answer. There is no right answer. We just want the child to enjoy the journey of learning in their mind. Um, they had to do some roofing work because I went through it. Uh, you're not here to indoctrinate my kid or socialize him. Um, you know, I, I set aside time trying to give her what she needs. Um, so she feel, and you know, it worked. She graduated with over a 4.0 from the university, um, and did very, very well scholarships out the wazoo. And she, to this day is very, very anal in a good way about studies. She learned how to learn. And that was the primary thing. But this outcome-based education, well, just like that one thing, that audio I played for you, that was the new common core. You know, it's a bunch of free-to-be, you-and-me-hug-a-tree idiots that somehow think they're going to change the dynamics of the world through the public school system. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's something akin to Hitler's brown shirts. Uh, the government has an agenda, has a, you know, they treat the public schools like a giant social petri dish, and every goofball agenda makes its way to your kid's classroom. And not because the teacher wants it, not because the superintendent is uh, you know, doing what he's supposed to do, although I think they're grossly overpaid for what they do, um, but that's what the federal government wants. They want people dumbed down. They w don't want people pushed back. Uh, to give pushback when they say something. They they don't want critical thinkers. Uh, bottom line, they don't want you educated any more than you have to be to graduate. So, no, I, I have nothing good to say about public schools. Uh, the teachers, I'm sorry, you're in the field. Um, like I said, you didn't uh, get into teaching to retire at 40 in Barbados on some beach because it doesn't pay that. What, starting teachers make 35000 a year, 36000 you know, in, in big areas, they can make up to 50000 Nobody, Nobody's getting rich off that. They're doing it because they love to learn and share the love of learning. Unfortunately, there's too much federal government involved. I, 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 no thanks. No, I, the, my kids will get enough of the federal government once they graduate and start working. Um, so, how comfortable am I? They didn't have that question that I wanted on there. Uh, let's go. And by the way, David, did you call uh, Birdwell ISD again? Yes, I did, and I didn't get an answer yet. Sorry, I hit the wrong button. That's all right. You didn't get an answer yet. Not yet. What are they meeting? They're forming a panel to convene a study to issue a report through the legal department. I'm not going to speculate. Okay. Uh, I mean, it makes it even worse that this was a special needs class. You know, I've worked in those. Uh, a lot, you know, I've worked beside people that, uh, are certified to do such things. Um, and man, that is tough duty for anybody. Uh, and then to hand a bunch of special needs kids in an emotional, uh, setting, this kind of questionnaire, what the, well, well, forgive me, I don't mean to be ugly, but what the hell was she thinking? Who thought this, this would be a good idea? I, I'm just curious. Who thought this would be a good idea? All right. Uh, 11 minutes after the hour. When we come back, your calls and nothing but your calls in the court of public opinion. All right. 316 the time. How comfortable am I? A friend invites you to go to a gay bar. Are you comfortable? Not comfortable at all? uneasy, fairly comfortable. Hmm. Your new roommate, this is for all those 11 and 12 year olds that live on their own. Your new roommate is Palestinian and Muslim. Are you comfortable? Not comfortable at all? Hmm. I still don't get this. Your women's studies instructor, do they have women's studies in sixth grade? I don't think they do. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, the, your women's studies instructor is a Muslim woman wearing a headscarf and a full-length robe. Are you comfortable, uncomfortable, uneasy? You discover that the cute young man or woman that you are attracted to is actually a woman or a man. 
Okay, see, that's uh, that's back to that. Timmy's got three pieces of pizza. What do you do? Now I'm all lost again. You know, I'm, I'm not good with that kind of stuff. Uh, let's go to Jerry in Weatherford. Jerry, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Jerry? Thank you for taking my call, sir. Rick. And yes, I want to commend you on your program and on your call screeners, the courtesy that they show and the courtesy that you show to your callers. A lot of talk shows, they'll take your call and they'll let you talk for 15 to 30 seconds. Then they'll comment and make their comments on the subject for another 15 or 20 minutes instead of taking more callers. You know what I mean? (laughs) I've been doing this a long time. I know exactly what you mean. Talk radio means talk, not just the host, not just the caller, but you have a conversation. Well, I've, I've been listening to you, Rick, since you've come back into the area. I didn't have the privilege of listening to your talk show uh, when you were previously located in the area. So it's a pleasure to listen to you, and I try to listen to you every day. But my comment was uh, on the subject of God and prayer in school. I'm going to try to contact a uh, Christian television station to let them know what you're attempting to do with your survey and see if I can get you a little help. Oh, that, you know, uh, David, uh, David is a call screener. You mentioned, uh, very nicely, Jerry, David is uh, responsible for that. If you go to Facebook WBAP and you scroll down, um, hashtag put God in prayer back in school. Somebody asked me, Jerry, uh, what I thought the best way to, uh, stop these school shootings are. And I said, well, the short term fix is you start paying police officers what they're worth and put them in schools. Uh, that'll take care of the short term need. And at the same time, put God and prayer back in schools. We didn't have this kind of thing when God and prayer was in schools. And even the founding fathers realized biblical principles work. Doesn't matter what faith or religion or theology you subscribe to. The, the biblical principles or what the country was founded on and at one point what the schools were founded on. Now they're founded on whatever goofball idea that comes out of government. That's the reason the pilgrims came over here to start with. Yep. Yep. The, the Church so, uh, of England was also their government. Uh, they wanted uh, freedom, so they came here, chi- tried to start a giant human experiment. Isn't it funny, though, Jerry? At one time, that's what freedom was all about. We've come full circle full circle, and we're right back in the same mess we were in when they decided to start a new country. Or worse. Or worse. (laughs) I agree with you 110%, Rick. Jerry, I appreciate uh, the kind words. Have yourself a great, great weekend. Let's go to Jason in Flower Mound. Jason, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Jason? Hey, so your mother brings home her new boyfriend who's a right-wing conservative talk show host. Uh, well, that that's not on here. I'm surprised, but it's not. Well, you know, that survey has two insidious things about it. The first is that the kids wouldn't know that they're different until you pointed it out. That's true. That You know, that's one facet of it. Yeah, that's a dynamic. You know, kids generally ignore things that adults obsess over. Correct. And the second thing that's really insidious is that if your kid answers yes on any of those questions, now he's the different person. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's implied that that uh, by virtue of how comfortable am I questionnaire, uh, not comfortable at all, uneasy, fairly comfortable, or completely comfortable. I submit that an 11-year-old uh, doesn't have the mental f- uh, faculties or the maturity uh, to look at these questions and, and appropriately answer them. I, I don't think they can. Well, they're going to feel uncomfortable with any stranger or anything that's unusual. Of course. Of course, that's that's part of being a kid. I don't know why it is, but adults just don't want kids to have a childhood. I, I don't. I don't get that. I don't know why. Well, it, it sounds like the Paul Pot survey, you know, and the re-education camp. Yeah, that's why I said earlier. Uh, you know, Hitler's brown shirts um, were by design, and it was this kind of garbage uh, that uh, they selected the students for that program in Germany. Well, I think the teacher needs to listen to your show for a year as a punishment. Uh, Well, um, hopefully she would change her mind. I appreciate it very much, Jason. Uh, Please don't be a stranger. Let's go to Clint. Clint in Cedar Hill. Clint, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Clint? 
I'm doing fine, and I could say so much, but I'll confine my remarks to what I call, what I told David. Okay. I I was a uh, I spent over thirty years auditing, and I am a retired CPA. And what I experienced in the auditing world is anybody that has a threat against them, the first thing they're going to do is obfuscate and make everything muddy. And then if they absolutely have to lie in order to escape the noose, they will do that. We saw that with Schumer. We've seen that with Schiff. We've seen that with Pelosi. We saw that with Obama. Anybody who has a left lean and God is not behind their back listening to their words, they will first obfuscate, and then if necessary, they will lie. I don't believe this teacher had the brains to set this test up, and I don't believe that I don't. And I believe that somebody has told her, and I believe that the that the uh, school district is obfuscating. Yeah, I I don't expect an answer, uh, Clint, but I just like him to know that are, there's at least a couple people out out here that care about something like this. I mean, you think about it. Your kids are at school for what from eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning till three thirty. That's a long time to be indoctrinated. If I just, I can't believe this was a special needs class too. That's even more troubling, isn't it? I mean, these kids have got enough uh, enough on their plate dealing with whatever uh, emotional issues they have, and then you throw something in the mix like this. A friend invites you to go to a gay bar. Are you comfortable? Uneasy? Fairly comfortable? Your history instructor speaks with a pronounced Vietnamese accent. How would an 11 year old even know what that is? How, how, seriously. Your sister invites her new boyfriend to dinner. He was a female. Now he's a male transsexual. How comfortable are you? You're going to give kids with emotional issues this kind of stuff? Uh, it, it, it's, it's a, a child in the class in which you are student teaching. How many 11-year-old student teachers are there out there? Quite a few. A child in the class in which you are student teaching is HIV positive. Are you comfortable? Uneasy? Your black roommate, again, we've got those 12-year-olds living on their own. Your Your black roommate gets a full tuition minority scholarship. I'm sorry, an 11 year old's not going to be able to... Pro- I know what they're going for here. Do you think your black roommate is being favored over you by getting a minority scholarship? You think an 11 year old's going to figure that out? I mean, what was what was this teacher thinking? What, what was in her brain or out of her brain? All right, 3.33 the time. I'm going to get right to your calls. A lot of you have been hanging on, and I appreciate your patience. Um, how comfortable am I? Um, yeah, it. Um, the teacher's been disciplined, but nobody seems to know what that discipline is. Um, I, I'd pull my kid for this. And that one teacher, well, all of us can't afford public. Okay, first of all, none of my kids... I uh, ever went to private school. I all went to public school. Uh, but I monitored every single, well, I would say every day, but probably every couple days exactly what they were doing. Um, it's a different time now. Uh, and it's it's worse. And I don't know how it can get much better. Uh, let's go to uh, Angelo in Arlington. Angelo, thank you for waiting. How you doing? Rick, I'm uh, emotional and insulted. And I'm going to beg you for something that i never done before. I'm asking you to give me a little extra time. And if I get too emotional, you can cut me off. My wife and I are the parents of a special needs. Okay, Angelo, you sound very muffled. Can you speak directly into the Uh, phone? Yes, sir. There we go. I'm begging you to give me a little extra time to give those uh, teacher and that woman that emailed you an education on what it's like to be the parent of a special needs child. We have a 34 year old boy who was damaged by DPT shots with mercury poisoning. The, the emotions and the heartache that a parent suffers 
that teacher and that woman that emailed you, it was cruel and a lack of compassion of for her, the teacher to do what she did and the woman to question you as far as an educator. My wife, because of our boy, is at an elementary school in Arlington, and she is a clinical assistant to 23 special needs child every day in wheelchairs, food, te- uh, food uh, tube feeding, medication. She comes home in the evening, sometimes crying. A child died three weeks ago. You, you would imagine it was her own child. These people that make these statements have no clue. My boy, I would like to have that lady that emailed you come to my house one night and experience what me and my wife go through. And not just me, all parents. I bet there's a lot of parents out there would like to call in right now and tell you how devastated they are to hear people talk like that and teachers to do something like that. And my son has seizures. And to watch your boy to see him go through that and the anguish that you had. And my wife is, people say she's a saint for what she's doing because she's not only dealing with our child, she's got to deal with all these people at the school. And it's very lack of compassion for a teacher, lack of common sense for a teacher and the woman that called you in. And that woman that called you in with that email I would love for her to call back in, get my phone number, and come spend a couple nights in my house and watch what the hell we go through. I'm sorry for cursing. No, here's the thing, Angelo. I mean, talk radio inherently is opinion-driven. Um, right. And, and it should be. This is not the news. We have news at the top and bottom of each hour. I'm not a newsman. I'm a talk show right. host. I have opinions just like you do. And uh, when I say to people or I say on the air – uh, you know, if, it, if this was 10 years ago and my, my kids were of school age in junior high or high school, I would not have them in public school. I would find some way to take them out and put them in private school, parochial school, home school. I try to do something. Um, and I would do that because of the government, the federal government's involvement in public education because of the, the teachers union and, uh, all of their pet projects, um, uh, I just, I, there's nothing about it I like. I don't like right. the, I don't like the thought of uh, people indoctrinating my kid um, to, uh, you know, kowtow to everything that comes down the pike, especially outcome-based education, Common Core, and all the rest. Right, Rick. Am I still on? Yep. I want to make one comment, one statement. My wife did not go to college. She did not go through a school for certification. She was given that job up in New Jersey. She was turned down here in Arlington and when she applied through this independent school district. New Jersey, up in New Jersey, they wrote a letter to the Arlington School District and said, you will never, ever, no matter what kind of education, college and all that, ever find another woman like this to handle children like that. In my last statement, and then I got to give other people the thing, that teacher and the lady to call it it, they would never set foot in another classroom. They never, because I would be getting a lawyer and saying, these are not the type of people that should be in teaching and educating our children, whether they're special needs or, or regular children. Well, they, you I'm know, again, about this. again, upset. Uh, if I give my opinion on public education, uh, after right. raising my kids uh, and seeing you immersing yourself in the news every day. Uh, if I right. give my opinion on public education, um, a lot of teachers take it personal because that's their life, yes. you know, yes. and, and I get that. Uh, well, I understand it too. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about curriculum. I'm talking about, um, you know, top-heavy administrations. I'm talking about the federal government's influence on public education. Um, you know, anything the government touches, well, let me, let me put it to you this way. Go hold class in, uh, the DMV some, uh, Friday afternoon. See how much learning is actually accomplished. Uh, Angelo, I appreciate the call very much. Mike in Fort Worth. Mike, thank you for waiting. I appreciate your patience. Well, you know, everybody is talking about public ed and all this indoctrination, but if you walk in the schools in Texas, a large percentage, 80 to 90%, I would say, 
are conservative people that are Christian, and yet this is still the narrative that's going out there. That was one teacher in Birdville that made a really, really dumb mistake, and yet, you know, every, the, the brush is so broad that, yes, this teacher's got to be dealt with. The reason they're not telling you what they're doing is because it's a personnel matter, and they are bound by law to not share it with you. Well, they're also bound by law to, to implement uh, federal guidelines when it comes to curriculum, and that's the problem. Mike, you're probably right. Texas is an anomaly to the rest of the country. Go to New York, New Jersey, Chicago, Detroit. Uh, it's totally different, totally different. Um, and yeah, this is one teacher. That's one too many. Because if you let this one slide and you don't make an example of it, how many of these, these asinine, how comfortable am I questionnaires are going to be sent out to other kids? Uh, I mean, you know, well, it's just one teacher. Well, it was just one accident. Well, it was, you know, just one death. It's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is just another example I mean, Birdwell uh, Independent School District. We're not talking about the New York City school system. We're, talk we're talking about uh, Birdville ISD. Uh, I would think that you would keep a handle on what's going on. And when it comes to the discipline, of course it's a personnel matter. you know. But I expect more to the parents of the kids at Birdville uh, ISD than just a blanket press release. Well, we'll take care of it. We'll take, well, you didn't take care of it to begin with. Was it a new teacher? Maybe she didn't know. Maybe she needs some refreshing on the curriculum. Is this, uh, I'll tell you, here's, here's the best way to analyze this. I got this in, uh, just a little bit ago. Here it is. Uh, please tell your listeners to go to the school board meeting and speak. This is from uh, uh, Margaret. I won't give her her last name. Um, go to the school board meeting and speak. Uh, I served on our board for 15 years, two times as president. Granted, that was 18 years ago. However, I know from experience that our board would want, capitalized, to hear about this and would pursue what happens to a teacher dumb enough to expose sixth graders to such junk. The Birdville ISD board will be considering contracts pretty soon and should be made aware of this. Well, they are that. I know that for a fact. My question, and here's, here's the crux of the email. Did the teacher do this on her own? Or was this really part of the adopted curriculum? If it's the latter, we should all be marching on Austin to the State Board of Education. Uh, that's the best line uh, in the conversation today. Did the teacher do this on her? As a matter of fact, David, I know I know he's on the phone. Okay, last call to Birdville ISD, all right? Uh, Not a problem on it. Tell him who you are. This is what I want answered. Okay. Did the teacher do this on her own, or was this part of the adopted curriculum? Okay. All right? Got it. That's going to that's gonna answer lots and lots of questions. Mike, I appreciate the call very much. Let's. Uh, I tell you what let's do. Let's check your afternoon drive. invites you to go to a gay bar. Your sister invites her new boyfriend home to dinner. He's a female to male transsexual. All right. I, uh, how comfortable are you? Oh, by the way, did you get an answer, David, from Birdville? I bet they're getting sick of hearing from me. I haven't got an answer yet. All right. All right. Question. Did the teacher do this on her own? Or was this part of the adopted curriculum? All right, let's go to Mark and Marshall. Mark, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I just want I just wanted to mention uh, one aspect of this that I think is important. I call it Part B or whatever, and so the community organizer in chief called it the teachable moment. But I really think these surveys, even if age appropriate, are done for a bigger purpose, which is to sort of re-educate people on the definition of words like comfortable and uncomfortable. Right. So in other words, if you're uncomfortable and you answer all those questions with uncomfortable, then you must be some sort of bad person and bigot, and et cetera. And it sort of, I think that's sort of where it's aimed. I think that's the purpose of these uh, type of surveys. 
Well, of course. But why would you give it to special needs kids at, in sixth grade? Oh, I think that's horrible, too. But I think um, it's just one example of many that happens in public schools, though. And um, and why you know, is that? Because the federal too. government's involved. These These independent school districts aren't coming up with this stuff on their own. Exactly. Well, I it, heard this uh, survey was actually a college survey that someone just took the questions and, and brought, you know, to the class. Well, it, so, yeah, um, by virtue of the way some of these questions are worded, it sounds like it, it belongs in a college class someplace, you know, I guess. if you, I, I'll be honest, when I was in college, if somebody would have handed this to me, I handed it right back. Um, and, you know, exactly. It, 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 number one, <laughs> how I feel about this stuff has nothing to do with uh, political science or economics or uh, English, which I probably should have took more course, uh, courses in, and none of it has anything to do with anything. Um, how comfortable am I? This is a, a questionnaire that was given to sixth grade students at Birdville Independent School District here in Texas. A friend invites you to go to a gay bar. Are you comfortable, uneasy, or completely comfortable? You think sixth graders have a full complement of mental facilities to tell them what a gay bar is and what goes on there? Yeah. Uh, a homeless man approaches you and asks for change. Well, if you're in sixth grade and a stranger approaches you, you should probably get away. Isn't that what we teach them? Um, your new roommate is Palestinian and Muslim. Are you comfortable, uneasy, or very comfortable? A group of young black men are walking toward you on the street. Are you not comfortable, uneasy? Your history instructor speaks with a pronounced Vietnamese accent. Okay, how does an 11-year-old know what a Vietnamese accent? Well, you know, they spend all that time in Da Nang, I guess, on field trips. Um, your history, you know, you as, you're assigned a lab partner, and they're a fundamentalist Christian. Well, <laughs> better drop the class. Not comfortable, uneasy, fairly comfortable. Uh, your new roommate is atheist. How comfortable are you? Your sister invites her new boyfriend to dinner. He was a girl, but now he's a male. Transsexual. Are you uneasy, comfortable, or uncomfortable? Uh, the young man sitting next to you on the airplane is an Arab. Well, that's, you know, those 12-year-olds, they got to get away from all that hectic schoolwork. So they jump a plane, you know, go someplace nice. Um, your new sweet mate is Mexican. Are you uneasy, comfortable? Your new roommate is gay. The woman sitting next to you, I guess, on that same plane weighs 250 pounds. How comfortable are you? Your brother's new girlfriend is a single mother on welfare. Oh, no. Oh, no. A child in the class which you are student teaching <laughs> at 11 years old is HIV positive. How do you feel? And I would love this one. You discover that that cute young man or woman that you are attracted to is actually a woman or a man. Yeah, there you, go. you have to go to Fort Worth Independent School District to figure that one out, I think. Um, all right, let's go to uh, Joe in Fort Worth. Joe, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Joe? Listen, Rick, I wanted to say, first of all, uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you, but if you allow me to Angelo that, that called a minute ago, God bless him and his wife. Oh, the special, special place. yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a special place in the world for people like that. Uh, but what I wanted to tell you was my wife is a, a teacher here in a local district, and uh, I won't say which, but... As far as the special needs label is concerned, they are rushed to put a special needs label on several children for several different reasons. Unfortunately, when most people hear the word special needs, they think of something like Angelo's situation. But that's not the case in the classroom today. Any child with any kind of learning disability that can be labeled from A to Z, is considered special needs. So w w when they actually were given that survey, you, you would be surprised that it's normally just a, a, a normal sixth grade class, whatever could be considered normal. Right. Uh, but and as far as the teacher doing something on her own, absolutely not. 
almost every school has uh, every class and every uh, all the teachers in the in that say second grade, third grade, fourth grade. They all work in teams, and out of all those team members, they are all provided the curriculum through a leader, and that leader is is either the principal or another teacher or a vice principal. So right, right. there. Yeah, there, there's no way to answer your question. There's no way she did it on her own. She might have acted on her own at giving it at that proper time, but I guarantee you the survey went through the channels and everyone said, yeah, that, that's okay. But but my question to you is the majority of the people that seem to call into the show are absolutely right. Everyone's appalled by this. So how do we let it happen in the first place? Well, what happens if you ignore it and it happens again and then that's again what I mean. and that's then what again? I mean. Yeah, so, you know, when people say, why are you talking about this? Uh, why aren't you talking about this? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Hey, I appreciate the call, and God bless you as well. Um, you know, the public education system is a mess. You got teachers working for, you know, nothing. You know, and I did teach. I taught honors biology class uh, in addition to several other jobs. And, I mean, I had three kids sharing a book. Meanwhile, the superintendent's making $158,000 a year, uh, having his office renovated. Uh, how much sense does that make? Does that make sense to you? That didn't make any, any sense to me. This is the news and talk of Texas. Now, it's the Rick Roberts Show on 820 AM, 99.5 FM, HD2, News Talk 820, WBAP. Well, I know there's got to be. A few hundred million more like me Just trying to keep it free yeah. Rick Roberts starts Rick Roberts starts right now All right, got a question for you A question Do you have implicit bias? And if you're on hold um, From what we've been talking about I'll certainly take your calls Implicit bias It's a, it's a term that refers to unconscious attitudes that may or may not impact our actions and decisions. On people of color, as another factor, that makes the program dangerous. What are they talking about? Believe it or not, lawmakers in Florida fear that arming school staff could harm black and Hispanic students. One of them said, I'm worried a black or brown boy running down the hall like anybody else to get to safety in case of a school shooting reaches in his pocket to pull out his cell phone. He could be mistaken for a shooter. Democrat uh, also said she expressed concern that a minority school staffer serving as a guardian with a gun would be seen not as a pro protector but as a perpetrator. While members of both parties, they want schools to be safe spaces, they disregard all of the information, and they totally disagree on whether introducing more guns to school premises would uh, help the situation. Uh, this is the dumbest thing I think I've heard yet come out of the Democrats' mouth. Black and Hispanic Democrats, and it went right down racial lines, joined civil rights groups like the NAACP saying that part of the Safety Act, it's, uh, it's got a, what is it, 20 SB 2076, part of the Safety Act could have deadly unintended consequences for students of color. Hmm. The provision establishes a voluntary guardian program that allows some personnel who meet certain criteria to carry firearms in schools. Uh, Democrats in the Republican-controlled House and Senate in Florida, they fought unsuccessfully to remove that provision from the bill. It's SB 2076. They argued that minority students are often subject to disproportionate levels of punishment compared to their white counterparts and are more likely to be mistaken for shooters. And then they would become targets. 
You know, <laughs> man, you know, it, kids are generally okay until the adults screw them up, aren't they? I mean, they need to be taken in hand once in a while. Uh, none of this partisan bickering back and forth. Put biblical principles back in schools. Make consequence for action the rule of the day. You know, just because you've got a troublemaker in class, don't indict the whole class for fear of hurting someone's self-esteem. Get, get rid of that all the uber-liberal garbage that just exudes from every door and window of the public school system. Teachers didn't get their certificates to babysit. You got a troublemaker, get rid of them. And these Democrats, well, you know, and of course the NAACP is asking for the federal government to confiscate all weapons like they did in Australia. What? You know, go go to Australia. See if you like it there for a while. Implicit bias. I'm a teacher with a gun. I see a black kid running down the hall or a Hispanic kid running down the hall. He reaches to get his cell phone. Bam, I take him out right there because you just never know. D d d really? I mean, how stupid have we become in this country? All right, let me get to your calls. Uh, it's Friday. I don't want to drag you down too much. Nathan in Arlington. Nathan, thank you for waiting. How you doing, Nathan? I'm doing very well. Uh, thanks, Rich, for taking my call. Sure. I wanted to back you up. I'm a teacher, a uh, retired teacher, 29 years science. So we have something in common, local district. And uh, uh, everything pretty much you said is right on. It's, it's, is any industry, especially with as many employees there are in education, you can have all kinds of people. I don't think that people understand just how much school has changed Everything seems to be accelerating, right? Right. How much school has changed in just the last 20, 30 years? I mean, most of the people out there going, well, I, I, you know, think this about school and everything. They haven't been in school for 30, 40, 50 years. They don't understand that right now there is such a lack of just decency in the classroom. Right. It is so difficult for teachers today to be able to educate. You can't probably get through it because of all of it's just it's used to and I'm, I'm again not a young man so i i used to, people used to react first positively and had to have to you had to make them mad but nowadays people seem to be mad and you try to have any kind of interaction with them that's their first response is they're angry so <clears throat> it's very difficult when you're asking somebody to do something they really don't want to do because lots of students don't want to be in school right Exactly. Uh, and get them to do something they don't want to do uh, and try to implore. And, and we have no, really no ability to really put any real pressure on them these days. And uh, I said years ago, students have learned to say no, and they're very good at it. So it's, it's just a situation in society where the society has changed. Uh, teachers have almost impossible jobs. Uh, as far as this teacher and the situation with this questionnaire, she did not get – I don't believe she made the questionnaire. The questionnaire came from some form of diversity class <clears> or <throat> some kind of special studies class in the university she attended. She dropped that off as an exercise maybe to get the kids to think, you know, make them think. But the point of that questionnaire is, is simply to sensitize people of our differences and make us feel like we're all wrong. Essentially, what it is, put us in a bad situation, put us all down, and then we have to fight our way back to some form of normalcy. Well, yeah, everything is, I think you would agree, uh, everything is abnormal. I, here's the thing I just don't trust. I don't trust uh, the, gov the federal government, certainly, but even the state government at some levels. I don't trust them to educate without indoctrination. Uh, right. I, you know, I, I just don't, uh, I mean, and as a teacher, I agree with you. Uh, it's, you know, I know what, what teachers are burdened with. I mean, you, you didn't get your teaching certificate, uh, to a play police officer or B be a babysitter or C, um, be a liaison for some federal government, uh, curriculum that you totally disagree with. Exactly. I wanted my students to learn. I wanted them to excel. 
I wanted them to find the joy of learning that I had. Because as a teacher, if you didn't like school, why would you even go into the profession? Exactly, precisely. I, I mean, it's not it's not like fun. you're going to get rich. Uh, it's you're not doing it's it for the dough. Kind of yeah. yeah, yeah. So go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it, it, I have often thought that when it comes to police officers, firefighters, teachers, uh, I mean, these are places, uh, these are positions. Uh, that we trust our very lives with, and certainly as, as you know, teachers, they're with our kids in some cases more hours a day than we are, and and we we throw them thirty six, forty six thousand dollars a year and call it good, and then have two or three kids sharing a book uh, because the superintendent's getting his office renovated. I mean, come on. Especially in today's world, when the W two is your form of, of validation. I mean, if exactly. you don't have a W two that's big enough. To, to you know cause the students to respect you, you're you're not a step above you know low end whatever. Uh, so, answer answer me this as a teacher yourself: How many first, second, third year teachers, or even more than that, are work are teaching during the day and acting as servers at night in various restaurants? I don't that I don't know. I, I, uh, starting salaries in in the middle cities and the, and so forth are not bad. I mean, it's, right now they're fifty plus thousand dollars for a starting salary. Well, and, you're going to find that in some areas, but you're also going right. to find thirty six to thirty eight thousand dollars in other areas. Well, here's the thing: I don't know how many. Ha- I can't answer your question because I don't know. But I can tell you though, when you go in at uh, seven o'clock in the morning and you don't leave till six. <laughs> and you're you're worn out. Period. I mean, yeah. What's and, your hourly wage uh, based on that? Right, right. So, and then and you're working on weekends and everything. Else. You know, things that happen in the background are not obvious. So it, it's it's more than a full time job. And then when you have students that just basically they're not there to help. And if if they just it's it comes down to the normal decency rule i mean if you if you're there and you know you're at school and you're there to learn and everybody's on the same page things go so much smoother okay but- let, let me ask you something because I'm, I'm a couple minutes over my break let me ask you one final question okay uh here's a question on the how comfortable am i questionnaire given to sixth graders your black roommate gets a full tuition minority scholarship are you not comfortable uneasy fairly comfortable or completely comfortable what would be the purpose in asking an 11 or 12 year old that question? It's, it's to establish diversity and it's to establish seg- uh, a, a, a uh, envy factor. That's all that is. They, they probably don't even know what that means. Right. It, it's, they have no idea what that means. But that, if, if, that, but it's like asking got something you didn't get. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do you, are you for that or are you against that? Well, you got to tell me what that is first. All right, 420 the time. Yeah, they can't even get it right when they're trying to implement a safety program. And it's not just Florida. It'd be anywhere. Uh, the, the injecting politics. Well, we're worried that uh, minority students will be uh, misidentified as shooters and put in harm's way if we let teachers carry guns. Jeez. Put God in prayer back in schools. In the meantime, put uniformed officers uh, in in the schools and limit the number of ingress and egress. Theater doors won't let people walk in from outside because they don't want to, uh, you know, sneak in and see the movie. Uh, but it lets people get out if they need to get out. So there's your immediate fix: uniformed officers in the schools. Um, you know, revamp the ingress and egress in the public uh, public school buildings. And in the meantime, reinstall the, uh, if that's a proper term, um, install uh, the uh, biblical principles that the country was founded on. And those work, no matter what your religion, no matter what your theology, those work. Bring back consequence for action. Stop telling everybody uh, that, uh, well, there is no wrong answer, there is no right answer. I guarantee you their first employer uh, will see a definite right and wrong in their work performance. You know, get the liberalism out of schools. You know, I, stop giving away trophies just for showing up. You know, I, I could go down a list for, for a day of everything we've done to screw ourselves up. 
You want to fix it? Put God and prayer back in schools. You want you want to have your voice heard? David, um, you put this up on uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook WBAP, and then scroll down. You'll see my picture, I think, is there. And it's hashtag put God and prayer back in schools. I said if we got enough people um, that uh, shared that, put it out there for people to see, I would take it national. I have uh, the ability to do that on several platforms. Um, so we put it up on the website. How many people have seen it? Hello, David. So far, 71,304 has been reached, 1,962 shares, and almost 2,000 likes. Okay, so 71,000 people have... Uh, have, have has been, been reached by it. yes have sir. been reached yeah um, get that up just a little bit more and we'll uh, we'll take it national hashtag put God in prayer back in schools just go to Facebook uh, WBAP uh, scroll down you uh, where am I about halfway down something like that somewhere that okay. a little bit yeah all right uh, you can find it uh, and by the way if you hit that hashtag well the second uh, link there it's hashtag something about the NRA correct yes yes sir you're correct okay. Uh, ha- click on that and you'll hear how that whole thing started. It's about a five minute, um, clip of the show and how that started. Uh, I was talking to Stinchfield over at NRA TV and, uh, everybody's, you know, wringing their hands and pulling their hair out. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And that's how the whole hashtag put God in prayer back in schools came about. Uh, well, Rick, what about me? I'm a Hindu. Uh, those biblical principles will make life easier for you too. You know, we're not telling you who to pray to. I'm not I'm not trying to push Christianity down your throat. I believe in God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. That works for me. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm simply saying put putting biblical principles back in the school makes sense for every theology, every every line of thought. Now, if those biblical principles uh, run afoul of your particular mindset, you should, probably shouldn't be in school anyway. Well, Rick, we don't believe in any of that. We sacrifice goats in the backyard at midnight. Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe you should find some other school. Uh, biblical principles work. They work. Uh, I mean, take a look. Whether you're Jewish, whether you're Christian, whether you're Muslim, uh, no matter what, if you're truly a moderate Muslim, uh, I mean, if you go all the way through it, the biblical principles work. They work to found the country. Um, they worked in schools before we let the liberals run crazy through our school system. I mean, you know, why is the teachers' union? Why were the people in the teachers union taking your dues and uh, trying to make it easier for kids to get abortion without parental notification? Can't get your ears pierced, but, you know, they were trying to make sure you can get an abortion if you need one. Uh, And, you know, a pesky thing about contacting parents. We don't need to do that. I mean, why are they even involved in that? What does that have to do with education? Well, anything that affects education, okay, you can tell that story to somebody else. You know, if you look at uh, the worldwide statistics on how we educate our kids, uh, let's pay attention to that. Bring godly principles back into the schools, which work for every theology and and line of thought, and then at some point, maybe we can take uh, the uniformed police officers out of the schools. I guarantee you it can't get any worse I mean, liberalism eventually destroys itself because there's no rules, regulations, parameters, guidelines. It's just, well, yeah, everything's okay under every circumstance. No, it's not. If the light says don't walk and you, well, that's not what I want to do, and you walk out in front of a bus, you're going to have a bad day. So, all right. Now, I'm getting ready to rant, and it's too late in the show for that. 426 the time. All right, Eric Bushman with the very latest breaking news. We'll check your afternoon drive. Uh, Tell you what, uh, David, make sure every one of those calls is starred because if they were patient enough to hang on, I'll get them on the air, and we'll do that next. All right, 4.33 the time. On a Friday afternoon, we made it through. How about that? 
Um, and of course, people are still going back and forth about uh, uh, illegal immigration. You know, yeah, I don't think they want to fix illegal immigration. They fixed it. You know, I'll be honest. The people in my business, you know, if we found some way without building a bureaucracy on top of bureaucracy on top of bureaucracy, if we found a way to solve the illegal immigration problem, you know, half the talk show hosts in this country wouldn't have anything to talk about. Uh, it's, uh, it's a sad situation, to be sure. All right. Well, it is Friday. And uh, on Friday, you want to relax. You want to. You want to take it easy, right? People, people ask me, what do, you, what do you do on a Friday? Well, it's not a whole lot different than the rest of the week, quite honestly. I mean, it's, uh, you know, uh, especially if you're in a heavy news cycle, you try to, uh, try to uh, take it all in. And the news doesn't stop just because it's Friday or Saturday or even Sunday. Uh, so you try to, uh, you know, you try to get it to the degree you can. But uh, you see, I guess if I was going to put my weekend to a song, it would be Pop a Top Again. Uh, okay, good night. Tip your waitress. I'm out of here. I'm oh, kidding. I'm not going anywhere. I still got time. Uh, and I said, mark all those calls, and I would take every single one of them, right? Uh, let's go to Terry in Dallas. Terry, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Terry? Hi, Rick. I'm good and glad it's Friday. <laughs> good. Um, going back to the uh, survey that they put in out in the Birdville School, um, it's obviously uh, leftist propaganda. Um, I got to go and see Dennis Prager last night at SMU. Dennis is a good guy. Yes, and he was wonderful. And, um, you know, he talked a lot about uh, the left and what they're doing to our kids and college students in particular. So that filters down into high school as well. I think it was just unconscionable what they did with this survey, uh, especially the age of the kids. You know, they have no idea what all this means. But, um, you know, the left is pushing this uh, equality instead of liberty. They don't care about liberty. They just want us all to feel equal. And if everything is acceptable, then nothing is unacceptable. Correct. And um, so there's no difference between male and female. There's no difference between God and man. There's no difference between parent and child. You know, like you mentioned how they, you know, they could go and get an abortion without telling the parents. And there's some talk, I forget what state it is, about letting... 16 year olds vote you know because that way they have control over all of us and all of them and uh, big government takes over everything you know if they could have it their way they'd all be wearing the same uniform you know the brown shirts if you will and uh you know even bringing god into it well there's some liberals who claim to be religious and they've turned god into a liberal you know, with um, God loves everybody, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, it doesn't matter what you do or don't do, uh, as long as we're all equal, and we well, have all the same stuff, and we yeah. all make the same money, and we're all given the same junk from the government. Well, you know, you're, you know that, that whole thing about, uh, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, I think Jesus would look at us and go, what's wrong with you? Um it does matter what you do, matters what you say, uh, matters what your actions are, matters what your thoughts are. Um, and, you know, everybody messes up, myself included. Um, but there's a way to take care of that. Um, you, can, you can deal with that. Uh, that's, what grace is, that's what grace is all about uh, through the crucifixion. But I'm not going to start a sermon here. I mean, um, liberalism always destroys whatever it's got a hold of. And it's doing a pretty good job with the public education system. Um, obviously, liberalism wants uh, the government to be in control of everything. Um, that's what liberals do. You know, we can, we can tell you where to live, where to go to school, what to eat, and how much. Uh, it's that's what liberalism is. It has nothing to do with liberty. You know, liberty is misconstrued. It's 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 human beings being free within a society, and and being able to not be oppressed or restricted uh, by some authority. 
on your way of life, your behavior, your political views. Well, that's within reason, obviously. Laws, um, we're a nation ruled by laws, as opposed to some third world banana republic. Um, you know, the, the liberals take it as the power or the scope um, to act any way you want. Well, within the laws of the land, I mean, it's even biblical, you know? Render unto Caesar what Caesar, under the Lord which is his. Uh, I, well, you're right, Terry. I'm glad you got to see uh, Dennis. He's a, he's a good guy. Uh, let's go to Doug in Glen Rose. Doug, thanks for waiting. How you doing, Doug? Pretty good, sir. How are you today? I'm doing well, thanks. Well, I have a question that I haven't answered for myself, and I'm wondering why the Democrats are so much against police officers in the classrooms guarding them. And I think it's because they know it'll work. And what's the biggest hammer they got to beat us over the head with for gun control? It's mass shootings. Sure, yeah. So they're not going to ever approve putting classrooms, armed guys in the classroom that are trained to protect the kids. Because if it works, and it will, it always does. Otherwise, they wouldn't have carding them in Congress or in movie stars. The guy, good guy with a gun always stops the bad guy with a gun. And if they lose the school shootings which they would, they might even lose all mass shootings. And if they lose that, there's no reason for them to, be- to scream about banning guns. Well, Doug, you are you know, I get email after email. Rick, you're insane. Rick, you're nuts. The, you know, it's never going to work. We're always going to shoot each other up. Okay. The, do movie houses make money? Where you go to the theater? They make money? Yeah. Why, why do they make money? Because everybody comes in through the f- same door. And they all go out through the same door. Thousands of people all come in. Well, there's doors all over the place in case of a fire, right? But you can't come in those doors. You go in through the front door where there's a, a guy that takes your ticket, right? Okay. Don't tell me you can't do the same thing with schools. You limit the ingress and egress of going in and out of the school. And at the focal point, you put a uniform police officer. Now, unless they want to tear a door off the hinges which would take a little time, set up, set up some noise and draw attention, he's going to have to go through that one door where you've got a police officer. All the other doors are fixed where if there's a fire, kids can get out, but they can't get in. Got to go through the same door. You know, I've heard people, well, architecturally, okay, stop with that. You know, you know that works. It works in lots of places, in emergency rooms. and It works in tons of places, but you're right. It's not being done because nobody on the left wants it to work. They don't want to solve this problem unless it's solved their way. NAACP, the head of the national NAACP, came out this week and said, I would like the government to confiscate all firearms like they did in Australia. Excuse me? Well, first of all, we have a different culture. We have a different mindset. And, well, I don't even need to go into that. But, I mean, that just shows you how nonsensical some of these ideas are. You got a kid with a gun. How do you stop him? Police officer with a gun. And you make sure that he can't come in the back door, the side door, the top door. You know, I guess he could rappel off the roof maybe. uh, But I seriously doubt that's going to happen. You do the same thing in congressional offices and emergency rooms and movie theaters. But you can't do it in schools? Come on. All right, 4.47 the time. Need to uh, get an update from David Prince with Eagle Gun Range, two locations, Louisville and Farmer's Branch. Um, He stepped up almost immediately uh, when uh, fallen Richardson police officer David Sherrard was tragically killed. Uh, leaving behind his wife and two daughters. Um, He decided to have a raffle, and it grew and grew and grew. So uh, the drawing uh, for at least uh, one of those raffles, or two of them, uh, is uh, Monday, I believe. So, David, how are you? Rick, I'm awesome. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm glad it's Friday. Now, (laughs) we've got a drawing on Monday, correct? Yes, sir. 10 a.m., as soon as we open the doors, we're going to draw... We have six different winners. We uh, have things that you know the two, uh, the rifle, the pistol, and the the uh, fire pit. And then we've had three sets of 
hockey tickets, Stars hockey tickets given to us. We have a total of six items that we're going to draw at 10 a.m. on Monday that have a, very, a retail value of $6,300. Now, tell people what the what the uh, firearms are and, uh, of course, the fire pit. The uh, rifle that we have is an FN SCAR 16S. It's flat, dark earth. It's chambered in 5.56. Five, comes with uh, one mag. And then we have an HK VP40. It's OD green with two 13-round magazines. The Circle J out of Fort Worth gave us a $1,000 value of a 36-inch fire pit. But then uh, we've had uh, Black Doll Mechanical gave us two sets of tickets to the there's a March 25th um, game and a March 31st game. Those values are $400 and $500. This includes a parking pass and access to the – but there are four tickets for those. But then since we last talked, uh, one of your listeners – came in uh, the day before yesterday, right after your show, and gave us $100 cash and another set of star tickets. Uh-huh. So we have um, two tickets for the 25th and Section 112 Row B, right off the ice. Wow. Uh, it's got a $350 value with a parking pass. And, you know, we've only had about 30 people come in and buy those $5 tickets. So there are going to be some big winners. So hopefully this weekend a lot of people will come in and – pick up those star ticket raffles for five bucks a piece well we're going to check with you on monday and see who the winners are now uh, if people <laughs> want to come in over the weekend and get a raffle ticket or simply make a donation how do they do that david uh we'll be open at nine o'clock to nine on saturday one to eight on sunday and then uh, the, all the raffle will stop then we'll put all the tickets into a bowl uh, before we open monday morning but if you want to donate, you have up until about noon on Monday to donate. I'll cut the check noon. You can go online, our website. There's a button there. You can hit just click and, and donate without the raffle tickets. And right now we're up to – we're closing in on $38,000. Right? Oh, wow. Wow, that's fantastic. Thanks to, your, you know, thanks to you and your listeners and our great customers. We're well over 1,100 people that uh, – that wanted to show Nicole, Emily, and Grace that, that they are loved and appreciated. And our thin blue line, uh, we stand strong with them. Amen to that. Amen to that. Anytime we lose a police officer, it diminishes uh, us all a little bit, whether we realize it or not. Amen. So, you know, let's uh, let's hope we can get that to 40 and even 40,000. And by the way, every penny is going every to the penny. family, right? Yes, sir. We we uh, we donated the rifle. One of my distributors donated the pistol. Circle J donated the fire pit. Black All Mechanical, the two sets of hockey tickets, and then uh, Johnny was CST Worldwide. Thank him for donating the last set of rifle ticket, uh, the uh, star tickets. So, you and your listeners have stepped up and done a great thing, and, and especially. Your your calls, Rick. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. this. This is far far exceeded anything I ever expected. So right. it's mostly to you and your listeners and, and keeping this thing hot. But um, well, we we appreciate okay. each and every listener out there, whether they agree with me on the issue of the day or not, is not uh, not even relevant when it comes to uh, our police officers, our sheriffs, uh, deputies, um, law enforcement in general. Um, we all collectively, regardless of our political affiliation, need to lift them up, support them, and uh, let them uh, let them know we care. Yes, and, uh, yes, we do. All right, this is David Prince, owner of Eagle Gun Range. And, David, if I'm not mistaken, it's Eagle Gun Range TX, correct? Yes, sir, dot com. Yes, dot sir. com. T- now, you can make your donations there. Go out and get a raffle ticket, man. If you, if you don't want a <laughs> firearm, there's plenty of other stuff there. Well, there is. And uh, you need to, when you go, ask for David or his wife, either one. You're going to meet uh, the salty, the earth type people if uh, you get to see David or his wife. It's just a, it's a phenomenal facility, by the way. Um, and great inventory, great people, very knowledgeable. Uh, it stands alone in its uh, particular field, Eagle Gun Range. So, David, thank you, and we're going to talk Monday. Rick, God bless you. We'll look forward to it. All right. Thank you, David. David Prince, Eagle Gun Range. And uh, that's that's great. Almost 40000 What do you say? $38,000? Oh, man. Uh, you know, thanks to each and every one of you. I, I don't often go to my uh, my audience for different things, but... Uh, when it comes to uh, law enforcement, every single one of us, whether we agree politically or not, 
Uh, we need to get behind uh, police officers, sheriff's deputies. We need to uh, let them know uh, we're there for you. We, we truly are. I mean, we've got a lot of uh, fence mending to do after eight years of Obama where he collectively tried to throw law enforcement under the bus. And, uh, you know, I think he succeeded in, in some areas, but he didn't succeed with the people. We care about our cops. We care about law enforcement. Uh, we support them. We've got their back when necessary. They've got ours every single day. And, um, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, go ahead, David. You were going to say something, right? Not really, but okay. Well, what do you want me to say? Uh, anything. Well, I find this. Go ahead. Well, okay. So I'll give the update of the Greg Abbott, what we did on Tuesday night. So far, they had 62,000 views, 430 shares, and 2.6 likes. And that was the video we did with Greg Abbott for the for Abbott for Texans on Facebook. Yeah, and, and tell people how they can uh, they can go about. You can go to Facebook and you look in the search search bar, and you'll, you'll type in Greg Abbott for Texans, and that's how you can find it. And we'll take you there, and you can see Rick with Governor Abbott toward All the right. end of the video. All right, and Monday uh, going to have another uh, another police officer that you can help out if you, uh, you're uh, so inclined. I would urge you to do so. Uh, they give it up for us every single day, and uh, when they're in need, um, hey, it's it's an honor to be able to step in and help out in some tangible way. Don't forget Eagle Gun Range this weekend. Get your raffle ticket. Make your donation. Um, nothing, uh, nothing we do can bring back uh, Richardson Police Officer David Sherrard uh, to his uh, his wife and his girls, but uh, you know at least the family will know we're there for him. That's going to do it for me. God's blessings on each and every one of you, whether we agree or not. That's always my priority. Stick around. Mark Levin is next. Good job, everybody, on the show. I appreciate it very much. I'm Rick Roberts. See you Monday at 2 on News Talk 820 WBAP.